Oh, hi there, I'm Ross Searle. I used to be the director of the First Tucker Regional Gallery. In fact, I came here in 1986 and left in 1996, so it was a decade living in Townsville. I think for me, personally, internationalising the program, um, we developed very soon in, in our programming uh, looking at the wider region and uh, I especially was very interested in uh, forging uh, cultural relationships with Papua New Guinea. My family has a little bit of history of Papua New Guinea but in 1988 when um, after I'd only been here two years, uh, Townsville hosted the International Festival of Pacific Arts. So that's an event that travels around the Pacific and it's very unusual for Australia to be a host of that event. So over 12 uh, Pacific Island communities uh, were represented here as far away as Easter Island and as close as Papua New Guinea. And of course Townsville had a sister city relationship with Port Moresby. So I thought there was a bit of a, a logical link for us to make connections with the wider region. So we curated an exhibition called Look, Look Again, which just means a survey to look back at something in PNG Pigeon. And we looked at the contemporary art developments in Papua New Guinea from, from its inceptions in the mid to late 60s up until the late 1890s. Well, the, the landscape that was here um, when I first arrived was strong. It's very interesting that there was quite a thriving art school here and there were a group of artists who taught into that art school. Many of them had come from elsewhere in Australia and indeed from overseas. So it was this strong, um, very active contemporary art activity here in Townsville. And there were also developments such as Umbrella Studio um, kicked off in the kind of late 1980s. And I have to say, at the time in Australia, there was a great deal of interest in regional Australia and regionalism, and that was really, uh, governments were very focused on that. So we, we really harnessed all of that energy, so we curated exhibitions of Townsville-based artists, we developed linkages with other um, regions within the north, particularly with 24-hour um, art in Darwin, and even ventured over to Perth to try and establish linkages with a really exciting event that was taking place in Perth that time called Artists Regional Exchange, which in a way is a little bit of a, like a forerunner to the APT at Queensland Art Gallery. So we looked at trying to establish some really interesting networks across the whole of that, you know, what was happening in terms of regional northern and kind of western Australia. So the community was strong, we really focused on that. For, for me, there was no interest in pretending that Townsville was somehow a suburb of Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. I thought it was much more interesting to try and program and to work with the artists that were here. So there were the two key things, really working with the artists were here, which was very strong and vibrant, and kind of developing some interesting networks that were not to do with kind of referring, deferring back to Brisbane, Sydney or Melbourne, but with other regional um, areas. That's a, such a difficult question. I'm really, <laughs> you've really caught me there. Um, well, there's, there's probably favourite things. I can't think of them at, at, at the moment. But, you know, I, I really love the fact that we laid, laid down some interesting, great foundations to the collection. So we, we collected some really nice historical things. Um, I curated a show called Artists in the Tropics, which in a way allowed us to research the historical practice and those who had visited the North over, uh, over a century. So it allowed us to, to look at acquiring historical works, historical photography, modernist artists, artists who had worked around Dunk Island and areas like that. So I, to be absolutely truthful, I don't necessarily have a favourite work, but I love the fact that we were able to, to 
build up some depth in the collection, and also to, to, to build up, as you mentioned before, the contemporary Pacific art collections as well. And I think we've, that we, I'm still talking as if I'm the director here, but when I was here, we, we did, I think, develop a really strong collection of contemporary PNG art. So I guess that's the foundation that I laid here, and I'm quite proud of that, really. I guess I'm just, I'll just refer to the answer I gave you a month about in terms of the exhibition programming, pretending that somehow that we weren't a suburb of Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane, and to see the importance of the practice that it was going on here, that was the artists who were active here, but also to see that historic continuum of artists who'd practised here and left a visual legacy of the, being in, in the, the tropics and being in the north. Um, and what quite unusual about that policy is it's a thematic policy. Mostly policies are about specific movements or specific media, or and a lot of regional galleries say in Victoria, collect specific media, textiles, photography, ceramics, whatever. And this one was more thematic based and it allowed us, I think, room to kind of look at the whole envelope of what the tropics is. It's not only necessarily the tropics of Queensland, but also the tropical region and in the immediate kind of ge geography um, of this area. Well, there's that, um, which was, I think, a really breathtaking, uh, audacious acquisition for a fledging, fledgling regional gallery. Uh, it's a large work. Physically, it dominated the space. In fact, it was so large, it was impossible to store it. So we, used, we actually had to draw a black curtain over it when it wasn't on display. Can you believe that? Um, there was actually, I have to tell you, there was another very controversial acquisition that I made when I was here. Um, I was fascinated by the work of Robert Hunter, and a work by Robert Hunter was acquired, and that caused such controversy. It was front page news. One of the councillors took it upon himself to create a replica of the work, to have himself photographed with a, wearing a beret, a scarf, pretend artist, in front of this replica, and that was on the front page. And I thought, 10 marks out of 10, he wants to create so much political mileage out of acquiring a very important work by an artist who is very important to the Australian canon, that, wow, that's great publicity for us. So once the initial controversy died down, we actually curated an exhibition about the pros and cons of this work. So that was a really interesting thing to do. So we had all the newspaper coverage lined up on one side, and then we had all the, you know, the pros for the work. So that it generated a really interesting de debate. And it, I think it's really wonderful that contemporary art can generate those kinds of debates because I don't think it actually happens now. Do you? Do, you, do we get those kinds of controversies? Has Persica had any sort of controversies? like that? I don't believe so. Mm.